Hello, LEGO fans. Welcome back to LEGO 48. Well, I'm back from Chicago in Brickworld 2023, which was fantastic. My GBC layout ended up being a little different this year. Due to space constraints, we had to do a couple of areas with double depth tables. I combined my modules with someone else who had an Akiuki train system. I started with a taller module and fed into her loading station, then she ran track in a loop to my tallest module in the back. From there, I used elevated track to zigzag across her layout until finally transitioning to my future city tower in the corner. Up front, we wanted to run the workshop modules down another set of tables, but since we couldn't light them for World of Lights, we included my switch module so we could bypass the workshop loop and feed my S-curve lifter directly. All of this turned out to be difficult to manage over the course of the weekend, but it was very cool and completely worth it. Generally, my modules performed fairly well, certainly better than last year. I did have some issues on Saturday due to the fact that my S-curve lifter was sitting right on a seam between three different tables that were not all at the same height, so the base was warped out of alignment, creating a lot of extra stress on one of the drive axles. Once I figured this out, I was able to put some cardboard underneath it to smooth it out, and it was pretty much okay from there on out. Beyond the GBC loop, the rest of Brickworld was just absolutely amazing. It's more than I can address here, but I did want to share some of my favorite sites from the weekend.
After the show, someone in the loop who had been running a ball counter posted the statistics from the weekend in the Discord channel, and it turned out that we ran about 18,000 balls over 11 hours, or an average of 0.47 balls per second. I asked what caused this, and that led to a lengthy discussion of ball quantities, processing rates, throughput, module reliability, absorption, and the GPC standard itself. After one particularly lengthy exchange on the theory of throughput versus module speeds, and what will happen when you combine modules that run at different speeds, I decided that it was time to go beyond theories and do some actual testing. So, here goes. The initial scenario was described as, assuming you have a GBC loop with 10 80 ball per minute modules and one 60 ball per minute module, and none of the modules drop balls, if you fill only the 60 ball per minute module and keep filling it until the last 80 BPM module dispenses into the starting module, then stop adding balls, at what point will the 60 BPM module overflow? Before we start, Let's go over some terminology. The GPS standard states specifically that modules have to be able to accept balls arriving at an average rate of one ball per second, arriving in batches of up to 30 balls at a time. Because of this, most GBCers tend to refer to module speeds in balls per second. I prefer to use balls per minute. One ball per second equals 60 balls per minute, because I believe the numbers are more relatable. Anyone who has ever driven a car understands intuitively what it means to drive at 60 miles per hour, and how other speeds like 30, 45, 50, 70, 85, or even 120 miles per hour compare. Using balls per minute gives us that same understanding. Now let's talk about cycle rate and batch size. The cycle rate is the rate, per minute, at which a module processes each batch. Modules that process one ball at a time have a batch size of one. Multiplying the cycle rate times the batch size gives you the maximum ball rate, which is how many balls the module is capable of processing in a minute. Any given minute has to have at least two batches, and the total, the maximum ball rate, has to be at least 60. Does that all make sense? So here's my test loop. I have two of the 2022 workshop modules, and I've measured them at about 133 cycles per minute. I'm measuring them using an app on my iPhone called BPM. To use it, I tap the button at the same point in each cycle, and the app uses the time between taps to calculate the average beats per minute. As my starting module, I'm using my tread lifter from the show, which has a minimum sized in basket. I'm powering it with a train controller so I can adjust the speed as close to 60 balls per minute as possible. I'll start the scenario by adding balls to the tread lifter until the first ball has completed the loop. Now, the scenario says I'm supposed to have 10 of the fast modules and I only have 2, but that really doesn't matter. Since all of the modules run at the same speed, every ball spit out by the first workshop module will be immediately picked up and processed by the next module at the exact same speed. I've added the balls per the scenario, and it looks like I goofed and added about 4 balls more than I was supposed to. But this is telling. All of the extra balls are sitting in the in basket of the tread lifter. So it appears that, in any given loop, extra balls will end up accumulating in the in basket of the slowest module in the loop. This was interesting, but what if I added a different kind of module, like a new ball pump that I just built? I inserted that between the two workshop modules to see what happens. The ball pump runs at about 124 cycles per minute, so it's a little slower than the workshop module. Turns out, this makes no difference. The first workshop module is only receiving balls at a rate of 60 balls per minute, so it can only feed 60 balls a minute to the ball pump, which is perfectly capable of keeping up with that. Here's a good view of the difference between cycle rate and throughput. As the wheel rotates, Each slot in the wheel is considered a cycle that would process a ball if available. But, since it's receiving balls at half the cycle rate, about half of the cycles go empty. In any given minute, this module will pass 133 slots past the output ramp. 60 of those will have balls in them, 
and the other 73 will be empty. Now, I know some of you are out there saying, wait a minute, what about modules that process balls and batches? How will that affect us? Those are really good questions. Unfortunately, I don't have any modules that work in batches, so I'm going to fake it using my maintenance containers. I'm going to set up a clock that I can watch, and every 30 seconds I'm going to swap the containers and dump the full container into the next module. This will simulate a module that processes batches of balls at two batches every minute, or one batch every 30 seconds. So what happens? First of all, the virtual module that I've added to the loop is absorbing an additional 30 balls that I hadn't accounted for, so I had to add additional balls to the loop to fill it up again. Now that I have enough balls in the loop, we can see what happens. The basket fills up with about 30 balls. When I dump that into the workshop module, that module is able to process all 30 balls in about 15 seconds. And then it's idle for another 15 seconds until the next batch arrives. But whether the balls are arriving singly or in batches, each module is still getting about 30 balls every 30 seconds, for a total of 60 balls each minute, as dictated by the tempo setting module at the beginning of the loop. This morning, I thought about my testing, and there were two other things that I wanted to try that I didn't consider yesterday. First, the ball pump was running way too close in speed to the workshop modules. So today, I've re-geared it so that it will run at a much more reasonable 80 cycles per minute. Let's start with that. Yesterday, I also learned that the wood floor is just way too slick to keep the modules from sliding around while they're operating. So today, I'm putting a blanket down underneath them. We'll start everything up and add the balls, and we get the same result as yesterday. If I add extra balls, it doesn't matter where I add them to the loop, they eventually all end up in the end basket of the slowest module. I can literally add three extra balls in the loop, and you'll start consistently seeing three extra balls in the treadlifter's end basket. If I add two more, guess what? You get two more extras at the treadlifter and nowhere else. Now let's add the virtual batch module and see what happens. Well, not much. The workshop module receives a batch of 30 balls and passes them onto the ball pump in about 15 seconds. 
for 15 seconds, I have a rate of 133 volts per minute, which is faster than the ball pump's 80 cycles per minute, so it gets a little bit high. But, if it receives 30 balls in 15 seconds, the standard guarantees that it will have another 30 seconds to clear the backlog before it receives the next batch, which it does easily. What happens if I add my batch module after the workshop module instead of immediately after the tread lifter? This doesn't change anything. The workshop module is only receiving 30 balls every 30 seconds, so the batch module can't pass on any more than that. So what have we learned here today? First, every GBC module needs a certain number of balls to operate, what I call the module's absorption. Adding up the absorption for all the modules in the loop gives you the total number of balls needed for the entire loop. If you have at least this number of balls in the loop, the entire loop's average throughput will be that of the slowest module, and all extra balls will end up in the end basket of that slowest module. How does this apply practically? I think that at a show, every loop needs to have a tempo setting module with a very large end basket, capable of holding excess capacity, and it needs to run at a consistent and controllable speed, ideally spitting one ball per second out into the loop in a continuous stream. That module should set the tempo for the rest of the loop, and all other modules in the loop should really have a max ball rate in excess of 60 balls per minute, so as not to be the slowest module in the loop. You don't have to run in the 120s or 130s, but you probably do want to be in the 70 to 80 balls per minute range. Good luck with all your modules. I have to get back to preparing for Brick Fair, which is coming up soon.